Welcome to a special edition of In the Zone. And now let's give it up for NFL Hall of Famer Kevin Mawai. Thank you for everybody there. It's been such an amazing ride this last week. And, and uh, who would ever thought, man, some kid from small town Louisiana would uh, have the honor of being inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And I'm, I'm so just over the top excited about it, but I'm thrilled to death that, you know, I get to represent all my teammates, friends, coaches from every level that I played at. And everybody knows how much of a Wampus Cat fan I still am. I still call uh, my brother on Friday nights. I think I've talked to him almost every Friday night since uh, since I got in the NFL and find out about how the Wampus Cats are doing. And so I proudly and will proudly represent Leesville and the Leesville High School Wampus Cats uh, when I get inducted in uh, early August. I'm speechless when it comes to trying to explain what this honor is and, and how much it means to me. It didn't start for me in Leesville. It started way back before that when I was my dad was stationed in, in Hanau, Germany. And it's a dream came true. Uh, I lived the dream playing in the league. Never could have ever even thought about the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And, you know, I just really believe if you just do things the right way and you work hard, then good things happen to you. And and that's been the case for me in my football career. Jeff Skidmore, I just want to share a little story with everyone. And you, you probably don't even remember this, but... Uh, uh, back there in, in New Lano, uh, we also that's where I that's where I uh, live as well, and, and my children grew up. And in fact, one day uh, after you had been drafted and you were with the Seahawks, uh, you were there at your house, and my son and a couple of his friends were going down to Andre's house that lived close to your parents, and uh, you were there. Called those boys over. Uh, said hello to them. Gave them a rookie card, and uh, you know that. I'll never forget that. My son, he'll never forget that. And it's amazing that, that that's the person you, you, you have always been. And that's why we are just so proud uh, of the things you have accomplished and, and, and the things that you continue to do. And, you know, you're, 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 a, you're a human being and you're a man that just, does, that you just doesn't give lip service. Uh, you, you, you live what you preach. Well, I appreciate it so much, man. But I got to tell you, man, oh. You know, so much of it's my mom and dad, you know. I know they're probably listening right now. I'm kind of getting choked up a little bit. Oh, bless but, you. Uh, you know, mom and dad raised us right, man. You treat people the right way. You treat them with respect. And uh, you never let things get to your head and become too big, for, too big for everybody else. And, you know, mom and dad did it right. They raised four boys who, who treat people the right way. And, uh, you know, my brother John, you know, and Mark and Scott and... Then you know it's by the grace of God, uh, you know, living a, a faith-filled life. I know it's never about me; it's about people around me and the influence that I can have. And the NFL was a platform for me just to to reach other people. And whatever opportunity I had was just giving out a rookie card to a kid, or or having an influence on a young college man, or or you know just keep other people on how to treat their wives and. Just be good people. Uh, you know, football is just a platform. It was a game I played. I played a little kid's game until I was 39 years old. And it's all about, you know, it's all about how you treat people and how you use that platform to reach out to other people. Tell us a little bit about who's going to be inducting you. I thought that was the coolest thing that I've ever seen. Yeah, so and, you, know, you get to choose your presenter for the Hall of Fame. And it was, without hesitation, I didn't even think twice about it. it it, it, it's going to be my wife, Tracy. We've been married together now. We've been married for 26. It'll be 27 years by the time uh, the induction ceremony comes. We've been together for 29. You know, I met her my freshman year in college. And, you know, I mean, I've got some great people in my life, and I've had some great great coaches and great teammates, but the best teammate I've ever had has been Tracy. And uh, I tell people all the time, she's a Hall of Fame woman. She's a Hall of Fame wife. She's a Hall of Fame mom. And this recognition is for her as well. I mean, she deserves every bit of it. I could not have done it without her. She's known every bump, bruise, broken bone, surgery I've ever had, every complaint I've had about every coach I've ever played under, uh, including Tom at Leesville. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I, for me to even consider somebody else would have been foolish. And so Tracy, uh, Tracy's my presenter. She's my best friend. And, uh, 
she deserves it, and this honor is hers as well. Got a quick question. Maybe uh, through through your NFL playing career, um, maybe you know once you're lining up to snap the ball, maybe you look over across the line, you know, and you see one guy, and you're like, oh, not this guy. Who who might that have been during your playing career? You know, I think that is a great question. I'll tell you this. I, you know, I think when you get to this level, for me, I never took the field thinking that I was lesser than a guy I played against. And oh, yeah. I had just enough ego to believe that I was the best player on the field and that everybody in those stands were there to watch me play ball. Which I know that's not true, but, but I never <laughs> looked across the line and be like, man, I just wish I didn't play against this guy at night. But that being said, people ask me all the time, who's the best defensive lineman I ever played? And without hesitation, I tell everybody, John Randall, who played for Minnesota Vikings for a bunch of years, he's a Hall of Famer. And then as a linebacker, the best linebacker I've played against was Junior Seau. Uh, oh. I've been playing against him my rookie year all the way to the end. He had a phenomenal career. God rest his soul. Um, but he, as far as a player who was instinctual and just played, you know, all out to the very end, the Junior's that guy. Now, the smartest offense. The player I ever played against is Zach Thomas. I believe he belongs in the Hall of Fame, and hopefully one day he'll get there. But that's kind of my mentality. I respected the guys I played against, but I never gave them too much respect. And I made sure that they had to look across the line and look at me and said, man, I wish they didn't have to play against Kevin Wise. Come on. Uh, Come on. So that was my mentality. When did and how did you receive the message that you were going to be in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, so once you make the finalist list, which is the top 15 or the last 15, you actually go to the Super Bowl city, and you're there for the Super Bowl. And so they have a reception on a Thursday night, and then a Friday they have the Merlin Olsen dinner for all the old-time football fans. Merlin Olsen was a long-time you know, lineman for the, the, the Rams. Um, so they have a big luncheon for that and then on Saturday prior to the Super Bowl is when the voters deliberate and so by 2 o'clock in the afternoon you have to be in your hotel room for you and whoever you want to be there with you and you just wait and the way the process is that you get elected into the hall and in order to do so you got to be one of the last five guys and once you're in the final five you have to get 80% of the votes of that room if you make it well if you don't make it Somebody calls you and tells you, hey, the vote's finished. You didn't get in this year. Better luck next year. You know, basically that's it. You get a, a, a denial phone call. If you do make it, you wait and you get a knock by David Baker, executive director of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And, uh, and that's how you find out. So, and it's not just like a little tap on the door. It's a booming knock. Bam, bam, bam. And uh, so in the room was just my wife and I. My kids couldn't be there because of school and athletics and so it's just appropriate that with her and I in the room by ourselves. And uh, there was a moment there where I didn't think I was going to get in. And then fast forward two and a half hours later, I'm sitting there. just I put my cell phone down and take a deep breath. It got quiet in the room. And the big knock came on the door. And I jumped out of my chair, threw my phone across the room to Tracy. Because I was supposed to video the reaction when I opened the door. But that, that, that didn't happen, and I just started crying. I just bawled oh. like a baby. And for those people in Leesville, my mom, dad, friends that know me, I, I'm, a, I'm a big crybaby when it comes to stuff like that. I just started bawling. I'm looking at my wife. She's crying. I'm crying. And she's like, well, you need to answer the door. You know, you open the door. You got this huge human being, Mr. Baker, 6'7", 400 pounds. And, 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 you know, he's like, Kevin Mawai, I just want to congratulate you. Welcome to the Hall of Fame. You know, That's and awesome. just, Something that I, and I just, I'm crying so much, I didn't even hear what he said. I just knew the, the knock told me I got in. And, uh, and you know, I kind of gathered myself, turned around, walked back in the room, and started crying again. My wife and I hugged up on each other, and uh, so that's how you find out. And then, you know, a couple hours later, they reveal it to the nation on the, the NFL Honor Show that night. Do they give you the opportunity to pick which team you're going in at, or, or do they choose it for you? You know, you... It's unlike baseball. Well, baseball, you go into the, into the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. You have to pick the team whose hat you wear when they the well in the NFL or in Pro Football Hall of Fame. You don't have to pick a team because the the Pro Football Hall of Fame recognizes you for the player you are, and then they recognize the teams that you play for. So, having played for Seattle, the New York Jets, and Tennessee Titans, all three teams will be 
recognized on my resume as a pro football hall of famer now in order to they sell merchandise and all that because i played for the jets for eight years the merchandise and everything that goes along with it will be new york jets green and white but i i owe it to the seattle seahawks to recognize them for four years i played there they drafted me they brought me into the nfl and then I had four great years in Tennessee on the back end. I made two all pros and two Pro Bowls. I had a 2,000 yard rusher. And, and I'm, you know, I talked to the owner, Amy Strunk, of the Tennessee Titans. And, and, um, and she's like, you're part of our family. You're a Tennessee Titan. You'll always be one of us. I said, I bleed green and white because I played so many years there. And, and, uh, how can you green, bleed green and white, but you say you're going to, you know, you're going to own up to the Tennessee Titans. It's like, cause they, they're part of my journey. Right. And, and, and they're part of my journey. They're part of what made me become a Hall of Famer. I had four great seasons in Tennessee, but I am a New York Jet forever. I'm in a ring of honor there. You know, I, I, I'm a New York Jet. But everybody's journey goes to different places. And sometimes it's a four year stop and sometimes it's a two year stop. And for me, I had three good teams that I played for that each one of them thought I was good enough to play for them. and But I am a New York Jet, and my, I love the Jet fans. They're so diehard and, and just adamant about their players, and I love it. That's what makes playing for New York a, a great experience for me. But uh, but they, they were an eight-year stop and a 16-year journey for me. Along with all that, you were also uh, chairman or president of the NFL Players Association. I mean, how, how did that come about, for goodness sakes? Well, you know, I think, first of all, people ask, Lisa has a very rich athletic history, and, and a lot of people don't realize there's been 10 players from out Lisa that have played in the NFL. And and that's pretty significant considering how small a town Lisa is. And, and I, so when I come back and I speak to the, the players there, I remind them of that. There's, there's not just one player that came out of Lisa that went to the NFL. There's 10 of us, I think, 9 or 10 of us, and, and that's significant. And and so that's the, that's one of the big things that, that I think Leesville should be proud of. Um, and then the other part for me, as the, the president of the NFL Players Association, it was something I wasn't looking to do. It was something that I felt I was called to because the situation was taking place on the business side of the game. Um, I've always felt like I had the leadership bit in me. I was a class officer. I was served on the student council at Leesville High School. So even that far back, I felt like I, I was an agent of change and, and leaders amongst my peers and, and my, my, you know, my peers thought the same thing. So, you know, so when the time came in 2008 to, to run or not run for the president's position, I really didn't want to do it, but there's something that gnawed at me about what was going on within our organization that I just felt compelled to, that if you're going to change it, then you, you're the one who's got to be a part of it. And I ran and I got elected and, didn't know at that moment that, you know, the things that would happen in the future. Within six months, the executive director passed away. I became the leader of a nationwide search to find a new executive director, which ended up with D. Smith, who's now still the current director. And, and then the NFL locked, you know, they, they opted out of the last collective bargaining agreement. So then I had up the leadership side of the negotiations to help uh, solidify the collective bargaining agreement that the players are now playing under. But, and I was just, you know, so I really, I truly believe that, that I've not only left my legacy and my mark on the field, but I left it off the field as well. And when I got inducted into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame in Natchitoches, one of the things that was in, in my display case was a copy of the collective bargaining agreement in 2011. And my, my final notes I shared with our board of supervisors. And because that's a part, part of it. The game itself is something that's so incredible. But there's things that take place to make the game happen. And for me to be a part of that, it wasn't just a player. Like, I respected the game so much so that, that I felt like I needed to be a part of the business side of it, too. Hey, Kevin, have you actually visited the Hall of Fame? You've been inside there to look at this shrine? I have. I've, I've had the opportunity as a player. To, I went one time when I was in Seattle. I think it was my last year in Seattle or my first year at the Jets. I can't remember. But we went and played in the game. And we had an opportunity to go to the hall, and I did not go purposely because at the time I didn't feel like I deserved it, and I wasn't worth to go into the hall of fame. And um, just because I had that much reverence for it. And then we played again in my last year in Tennessee, and by then I'd already made the Pro Bowl a number of times and all pros, and 
and I'd already, people had already started talking about the possibility of me being a Hall of Famer. And so for the very first time in 2009, I went into the Hall of Fame. And the memorabilia and all that's really cool, but the, the most precious part of that entire hall is the Hall of Fame room itself with all the busts of the greatest that ever played the game. And when you walk in there, and for those that haven't been, it's a very hollowed place for people who understand the game of football. And, and it's, you know, I say this all the time, I describe it, you're walking among ghosts and again, amongst legends. And though they're not in the room physically, you just feel the presence because of the awe that it comes with being that, being recognized as a football hall of famer. So, and I saw the greats. I saw the faces of, of my heroes when I was a kid. And, and I used to be one of those guys now. And that's, that's the, it, it, yeah, it's a wild moment for me in my life because I'm, I'm, I'll be one of the ghosts that, that live in the hall of fame. And, uh, so I've been there. Tw- I've been there twice. I only went one time, and you know, I just I had such an appreciation for it because of how much I loved the game and how much the game meant to me in my life. And so I'm just excited. I'm excited that I'll be a part of. It. I got three teammates of mine, you know, from two from Seattle and one from the Jets that are in the Hall of Fame, and countless players that came before me that I looked up to as a young player. And even when I was in college, they're like, man, I want to be like those guys one day, and, and now I am. And uh, so it's going to be really, really cool. Well, you might have visited once, my friend, but you're going to be in it forever. So we're proud of you. And- well, I just, uh, my sentiments are the same for all my friends, classmates. And I, I told my closest friends in Leesville, the guys I play with, it's not just Kevin Mawai going in the Hall of Fame. It's all of us. And- oh, and uh, it's my teammates. It's Jack Andre, it's Brownie Parmley, Danny Smith, Terry Williams, James Williams, all the coaches I played for, all my teammates. Um, there's a small part of Leesville that's going into Canton, uh, the Pro Football Hall of Fame, when I get inducted in Canton. And because all those friends and families and coaches and players are all part of my journey. And whether they can be there physically or not, it doesn't matter. Just know that in my heart, the Leesville and the Wampus Cats will be well represented when my boss is set in that room and, uh, and for future years to come. And so I'm excited about it. I'm excited to represent Leesville and the Leesville Wampus Cats, uh, more, more importantly, my family, the Moai family, and uh, all the other teams I played for. It's such a great honor and a privilege, and I just, you know, I can't wait. It's going to be an exciting summer. No, I just want to thank you guys so very much for having me. Leesville, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, this is a year, the city of Louisville and every, my teachers, everybody, you're a part of this. And we're all going to celebrate in some way or fashion. I know tickets are online on com already. Give a shout out to Brown Tom. Everybody knows who that is. So you guys, I love you guys, your family. And, uh, man, we're all going to Canton. 93.5 KJAE, a proud supporter of Vernon Parish High School Athletics. And you are in the zone. Your home team consists of, from BWS Sports, Bill Norris, from the Leesville Leader, Chris Schoonover, and P.D. Benson, the Fast Cash Bash. You're in the zone on KJAE. And now, Brian Matthews.